Yes. Um, and so I, I will share a hack MD document, which I was um, like, it, it's a very rough draft proposal. Mm -hmm. No problem. Um, it, it was just for uh, for you to get a sense of the context that um, the idea was coming uh, out from. But uh, we don't definitely, definitely we don't need to uh, kind of limit ourselves by this. Uh, I think, um, yeah, we can actually start uh, thinking or ideating uh, completely uh, from the bottom up or anew. So mm -hmm. yeah, whatever is uh, preferred. Um, but yeah, just this is just to um, get a sense of, of the frame. Uh, and uh, I started working with um, a Rust library, like in the Rust language, which is called Bevy. And it's mm -hmm. one of the, um, let's say, um, yeah, one of the game engines um, in, uh, in built in Rust. And I really liked the way how it's, I don't know, kind of lean and, and uh, it compiles quickly and it's kind of ergonomic. So I thought that this might be um, a nice, um, yeah, nice environment to, uh, to, to, to work with. And another reason why I chose this one uh, at least for the initial kind of prototyping or playing with, uh, is that since it's in Rust, then it can be eventually pretty easily um, connected to Holochain, which was what we are mm. speaking about with Pablo, for example, in kind of the Holochain circles. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so, yeah, so, so that's another thing I'm working on, kind of the bridging actually, like being able to directly um, use Holochain and mm -hmm. call uh, the Holochain APIs within the game environment. Yeah, and so so I can share, um, do a screen share with you. Um, what's the state of the yeah. art right now? Uh, it's yeah. very, um, yeah, let, let's say it's very uh, tiny still, mm -hmm. but I, I, I was just playing like with the very, yeah, I will share the screen. Yeah, well, uh, as a side note, Holochain mm -hmm. is actually a good idea because um, like as if we get something going, Exa has been kind of friends with Holochain. We haven't kind of met lately too much, but mm -hmm. back in the time when we were more in US, the some of them used to stay at our house for mm -hmm. a while and so so like and we talked about collaborations but never really done. But but I do think it's good ground. That's cool. Yeah, and can you see the screen share right now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically, I'm like I'm now at the stage where I was just like really learning to generate primitives and to uh, to get inputs and to like play with camera and to like to to put some movement or animation. Mm. So there is really like there is not much uh, mm. much groundwork, but um, yeah, it's kind of me getting versatile with the let's say with the Bevy engine. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, but now I'm able to generate different shapes or load different meshes or um, play with the basic UI uh, or kind of connect it to external signals. So I'm not sure, like, uh, if, if you if you think that this could be a useful playground for perhaps, um, I don't know, making a interface to um, start creating different patterns or rules or rights uh, or somehow defining or expressing them in a graphical form or whatever then i would be happy to explore this yeah, somehow but yeah like one one thing that immediately comes to mind as, as almost like from the outset um, which is like slightly explored but hasn't really been explored too much in crypto mm -hmm. or even games otherwise is like we don't have to take the premise that all of what we are talking about here as possibilities is implemented mm -hmm. inside the game or inside mm -hmm. a, a interface like this. Rather, one can think that the mm -hmm. interface can a be a, like um, its own frame. Mm -hmm. So, to just to give an example, like if people have organization and they have voting, they might have. Uh, whatever the platform is. I'm now forgetting what's the common voting platform that people use, but whatever, like uh, they they go into this uh, protocol of interaction that is probably slightly modified, but it's within this sort of website and they have this voting mm -hmm. and then the result comes and then the rest of the organization runs elsewhere. Now that's a limited mm -hmm. case. I'm not necessarily thinking that limited what the games could be, but it's a good mm -hmm. uh, idea to keep in mind that 
in a way, the game can be an enhancement of a frame that in itself like enhances the organization. And this is just to kind of uh, introduce a, like flexibility of thinking, like how even a small game structure actually might be useful. It might be useful as a, uh, like interactive representation. So it's not just passive, but it, it's actually what people affect, but how it represents things means something for the organization. So um, this sets up the like the starting points into a much you know more, more flexible spectrum and usability potentially in a, a shorter uh, or less massive um, operations. That's one thing. Um, secondly, like a little bit like more to the experimental frame because yeah, like earlier it's really just a mindset. Like we're already doing this, but we don't just think game environments towards this, but they are just as, or maybe even more uh, flexible towards this. But the second is like, uh, there are some really like early interesting cases from some groups of like, we make this one form of an organization that is kind of wacky, but it's, it's you know, like it's made as like, almost like this, um, like a computer RPG land and and you encounter the people there if they're there and like it becomes this sort of like another parallel way of dis um, discovering ways and you take some of the structures or maybe all of the organization directions you thought but then you utilize the kind of strengths of the game to maybe create something that is in a way an alternative or a different reality and and that's that's I think another um, way of looking at things, way of looking at possibilities that uh, I think could be useful potentially and, and kind of open up also this sort of creative thing like, like I mean, we go to all kinds of, of um, weird computer game worlds in, 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 in quotation marks uh, and then they have uh, weird interactions, all kinds of interactions. What if we think of those as meeting places or, or organization places and what kind of possibilities open from there. I think there are lots. So those, those are my thoughts, but what about others? I find it super nice to see this uh, Rust Bevy engine already running. I think it's like a really interesting intersection using Bevy and using Rust, mm -hmm. sort of like having a game engine logic that is also holochain, holochain compliant might allow us to like maybe formalize some of the um, structures we've been talking about as holochain rust code and i think that would give us like an insight on on some yeah actionable mechanics and how they uh engage with a formalized uh, protocol like i i find a lot of value in that mm -hmm um yeah i'm just curious if bevy is um natively 3d or can you do 2d like how it's like created for 3d games it's both yeah you can you can do both okay. now that's interesting yeah. yeah super nice yeah and, and it seemed to me peko um I'm not sure if um, if this is just a rephrase, rephrasing mm -hmm. part of what you said, but what, what uh, I would find perhaps also interesting was, um, for example, when we are speaking about rights um, mm -hmm. or rules, and it might be interesting uh, to, for example, create some kind of interface for mm -hmm. actually defining spaces and their mm -hmm. affordances yeah. or rules or rights and kind of how do we actually define this lang language yeah and perhaps how we encode value or yeah and then perhaps even bridging to like the stocks and flows diagram at some point because just to illustrate that there can be some flow or circular circulation of value but but that's i guess too 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 far um but yeah just like playing with defining rights and connecting them to specific places or fields or or objects yeah. mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I think that is definitely one of the directions. Like, it's good that you kind of uh, like highlight it out. Like, like, and it really is even practical. Like, my earlier example of like people using voting platform to create the voting is actually a codification of rights. Like that we want certain uh, assurity around the thing that is very 
heavily rights oriented, your right to vote and right to uh, have that vote recorded. So that part is coded. Once that's done, there's a discussion around the vote, but that's not necessarily coded. Maybe it happens in some other platform like this or Telegram, or maybe it happens in real life. And that's that's every day nowadays. Like it's just like wood spot trees, seeing that as like a general possibility is actually more flexible than like what is conventionally used. Martin, for example. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm <laughs> I'm switching on and off the microphone because I'm not sure if I'm having something really clever to to say. But I I I just like my in my instinct, my reflex would be to say, hey, but like I'm so I'm completely completely not familiar with the Rust or Bevy and Gen or what even mm -hmm. out, those types of things. That's outside. That's okay. My, yeah, my kind of not many trip. people are so. Yeah, but um, but my my reflexive impulse would be to say, hey, wait, those things also have rules, logics, mm -hmm. affordances. And so maybe in the same way, like what we've been, or what I've been trying to do with this residency that I keep coming back to mm -hmm. here is also like for, uh, for designers, for example, to look back at the, at the tools they use in a critical way, kind of to see, you know, what is it that makes, that that thing makes me do Mm. because of the way that it is structured like materially yeah. temporally and yeah yeah of course and so like that would be for me to say hey but like that would already be interesting in itself to look at the at the way that that engine is 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 structured but of course then like if you if if you stop there then you start biting eating your own tail the whole time so what i was maybe thinking was that um, Jakob, if I understand you well, what you what you're trying to do is kind of in a way to diagrammatize what what we're what we're trying to talk about here, right? And so then then like if if that is the case, then um, then I guess in order not to fall into the trap of kind of sorry, it's like my my wording is probably a bit off, but in order not to kind okay. of assume that 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 the mission of that would need to be like an an exhaustive. Uh, capturing of every and all logics that that you know as you just say there's codified stuff there's like things that, that appear less uh, codifiable possibly mm -hmm. or that that one would just kind of go into this one but like you know um parallel it with other forms that might not be kind of code based maybe this type of conversation or game testing is another form of exploring these same logics and kind of assume and embrace their parallelity yeah 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 no. yeah i agree and i can give you very short run rounds of these concepts at play here because it, um, i think um, like it's good to bring on board so so baby is essentially a game construction engine kit like it and think that's that's a good frame of just thinking of it simply but rust is a coding language which is rather interesting in its capabilities towards security, but still being a kind of pragmatic programming language. Uh, a lot of could be said about that, and I'm probably uh, butchering some parts, but I'm trying to be short. And finally, Holochain is, is one of the more interesting architectures on the crypto side, and not only concerning uh, tokens, but including that. It, it's, it's kind of this sort of next generation, has been for a while, uh, and, and very different from structures like uh, Ethereum, etc. So, and uh, and it's been in development for quite a while. So that's Holochain, and Holochain is currently being developed in Rust, the language. That's that that's a rundown of these things. Yeah, and Martin, perhaps to clarify a bit. So, um, I guess there's uh, there were let's say two aims or objectives for me, um, like why I started getting into this. And um, they are perhaps a bit different overlap. So one of those was that actually the concepts around complementary currencies or mutual credit or asset back credit, are those patterns that you can compose when like um, in the currency design discipline, let's say. So it can be a bit confusing and hard to imagine especially when 
like with more advanced terms, like I don't know, let's say bonding curves, and so so one of my um, aims was actually to um, experiment with expressing those patterns uh, visually uh, in a kind of playful environment to see oh the bonding curve so instead of having just a curve so we can have a I don't know a machine that is doing something and so it's a little bit more uh, material to see how the mechanics or dynamics or hydraulics or whatever <laughs> we, yeah. we, we use um, and then and then also to per perhaps compare the two scenarios, like when there is in a village, there is a um, some kind of complementary currency, additionally to uh, to uh, like the hard hard um, currency, and to just see how the flows can be uh, like influenced or different. But so, so this was kind of the original starting point for me to 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 be even thinking about this. And yeah, I know it's a bit ambitious, perhaps, but. That's uh, that was the, the and and then when we started uh, speaking with Peko and you about rules and how everything can be coded well everything well, how organizations can be codified through rights and rules and, and and all those primitives so yeah it was kind of I started thinking that perhaps we could find some visual expressive language or dynamic to just yeah. visualize or play with those concepts kind of the board game style yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't like to close it down to just create this kind of, yeah, I don't know, we are tracking everything solution or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. What is that machine called that um, that visualizes economic flows, this kind of wall-mounted, water-based? Um, I have to ask uh, my wife one second. I close the microphone. I'll be back in a sec. <laughs> All right. Felix, Dustin, do you have... Um... Any comments? Uh, at this moment, yeah, I think it, it really seems like a fascinating path to go. I, I really like this idea of thinking along these lines. Mm. Uh, hello? Yeah, we can hear. Can you hear us? That's another question. I think he might be having still some network problems. Um, I'll be on the move. Uh, Felix, do you have any comments? Not really for now. I'm uh, trying to get big back into the discourse. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. Listening mostly. That's okay. Like, yeah, like um. I think it's a, like um interesting like um it's almost like a parallel branch um but i i do think it also it's not just you know like um slave to the main branch so to speak because i do like like the topics mentioned of um this sort of not just visualization but functionality of computer game like or game like in computer video game, I tend to call them digital games anyway, but uh, that they, it kind of opens up new possibilities also in terms of playfulness, like like really like many of these worlds could have like an organizational spectrum or consideration or usage, but usually they don't, or they have it just as, as a kind of side element and, and like, uh, that's why looking at this possibility would be rather interesting, especially in a game construction and engine, like and 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 I think in such a situation, even kind of minimal games or games with kind of minimal representation styles actually kind of might prove out to be rather useful in in in, in terms of like creating an interaction that um, otherwise would be hard to make. Like one thing I know, I, I'm sort of fairly familiar. I used to work some years on more connected to the digital games, um, and 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 even took part in designing some. So <clears throat> the one thing I very much kind of took from that is that when you move to that realm, there are a lot of possibilities to consider 
that are interesting that are only really exist there. When you move to um, fields like board games and role playing games, it's the same thing, but they like they they have certain strengths that like the computer games do not. And I do think it's true here as well. Um, wait a minute, I'm trying to make Zoom to work because for some reason, what is there? Okay. So Dustin is joining. Um, yeah. So so like like it might bring out uh, a form of interaction that otherwise one would not really think of. Um, and that might be an interesting situation for, say, a distributed organization. How they can not just meet but have a <clears throat> certain kind of interaction, which is a mixture of information and and possible actions that then becomes to. Um, both represent and function uh, be functionality for an organization, like so, um, and especially keeping this mind that it doesn't have to cover the organization. I think it's like organizations are by nature uh, like very heavily multimedia, even current day. Like it's it's just a normality. It's like somebody writes a document. It's part of the organization. Then there is a discussion on the document, another medium, and then and then there is a protocol of a decision up, um, upon that discussion. And then somebody makes a graphic picture out of that document, and and so it goes. Like we already live in this reality where organizations actually want to co um, combine. Um, mediums constantly uh, in order to function even on a basic level and but that's a that's a possibility that's a strength like then like inside that modularity or multimodality you can have this um, game like presentation as well anything else to add and also Jakub since this is a topic you opened like anything else we would you would want and like, what would be good next steps? What would you like from the rest of us, et cetera, this kind of question. Uh, sorry, was this a question for me? Yeah, like what would be your desire of like, what could happen with, with this direction next? And mm -hmm. what, could, what would be your desires? What would you mm -hmm. like uh, in terms of contribution? So actually what I'm, kind of considering is a bit crazy step but um uh, and that's uh, actually reapplying to a college actually game media in the mm. arts college here and this would be my project <laughs> so <laughs> so that's um that I just just for a context which i'm like in my old age to just um extend the youth <laughs> a bit more <laughs> but anyway so um that might be happening and what i i think what what, what i'd find useful is perhaps um in the telegram or afterwards just your thoughts what you find could be the minimal most useful i mm. don't know initial thingy that we could play with um kind of the stem cell or, or what, mm. yeah yeah um, mm. yeah that uh, sounds good and i can promise to write something because i have a couple of ideas and even cases maybe to check like that aren't are are kind of um, uh, potential sources of inspiration from the more the video games um so yeah and everybody else any ideas or even questions i, I think it's always good to write even small things rather than nothing um, um I should sometimes use that lesson for myself. But anyway, so <clears throat> uh, then secondly, uh, the, um, the second topic being the um, continuance or a second session or a further session of the playtesting. Now that there are other people, we could do a short summary of kind of the structures we were using. Um, I mean, of course, uh, many of these things are summarized in the document uh, linked in the Zoom chat, the, the Obok, um, which is a minute uh, name come up with in two minutes. Um, but anyway, like, a, but, but maybe the document summarizes them 
uh, less well than like just talking through them. But the basic idea uh, I could highlight as kind of as follows: like, um, so <clears throat> uh, the idea is to create this what you could roughly think of moves that are uh, uh, structurally elemental for creating organizations. Um, and, and for these moves, steal from many of the approaches present in, in games. Uh, and, and how, um, uh, like, well, well, one main thing to point out that that is kind of like organized in almost like two steps um, that um, you have um, the the first step is uh, called the elements which is this sort of four like you could think of them well as elemental blocks um, that try to kind of comprise organizations uh, well in the current sense but also in maybe in this sort of expanded sense we've been looking towards the argument is uh, not that it's all already there that remains to be seen but I think the four elements are a pretty good starting point and those are defined in I think in page three on the document but they, they are essentially roles and this of course inherits a lot we have talked about roles and roles separated from characters and how it's, it's almost like the suite you take and, and, and rights being uh, essentially, or roles being kind of more like wrappers for rights. Uh, and that when you get a certain package of rights that can be considered a role because it becomes like, almost like game-like functionality. If you get certain rights to a board game, that's a position to play. Um, uh, and then second one is scenes, and this is related to the discussion of maybe last few weeks, some several weeks, um, and how scenes in this wider sense, um, and how it's been used in the last 10 years, maybe in, in games, is an interesting concept of thinking about situational composition and situational design. And um, essentially that comprises uh, everything from like uh, how a project can be um, um, a scene, or the scene can be a way to design a project in a different manner than what normally is, mm. but also comprise things that normally wa are wanted to be there. But scene can also be like a moment inside an organization, um, uh, or it can also be like a, a used to describe something like, here's how our voting goes. And the one thing uh, at the end of the last playtest, uh, through an one example move, or um, came to how to create, take an item like a certain kind of bulletin board in an organization, and make it a scene by adding a few rules of how the bulletin board is ex uh, described. Or um, and this is an interesting com combination because part of the scene can be that there is an item included and. That item is the bulletin board, and then there is a rule included, and another rule, and maybe maybe there are roles, or maybe there are not. Um, but that kind of creates a sort of combination of, you know, physical reality and 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 uh, game space. Um, uh, so that could be a scene as well, and that allows to think about it not just as the object, but like something like object and functionality combined. Okay, but so scenes is a big thing. It's kind of complex, but I think it also has good comprising powers and a lot of approaches we can steal from from uh, various games. The third one is offers, and um, like in a way, like one could say that there's no need for concept of offers because, in a way, like an offer is like a scene. Like if you create an offer, you could think, well, that's just a scene. But the difference here is that, uh, which and, and I think it's a useful practical difference, is that when something is tagged or labeled as an offer, it means that it's something that is not yet part of the organization, or it's not yet accepted by, say, a person, agent that uh, is uh, getting the offer in itself. 
whereas a scene inside an organization is already part of it. So, um, like, in many situations, offer might simply be a wrapper around the scene or a role, etc. But it's, it's there precisely to create the sort of categorical difference of things being potential and things being actual. And, and uh, maybe through further playtesting, we find other ways to do it. But I, I think that actually that difference is rather important. And finally, the fourth one is filters, which is like things that don't really affect whatever the structure is, whether it's role or scene or whatever, but um, but the rather um, create this style to approach whatever the situation is. So just like a filter in a camera colors everything in a certain way, but the actual landscape is not changed. Um, so. There is a bit of overlap, like like in some ways, role can be kind of like a filter and whatnot. But I don't think that's a problem. This sort of platonic separation of everything is not usually the best situation of design. But okay, so those are the four elements, and and then the idea is that the gameplay in this very rough um, early draft is that um, a, the playing kind of the moves. Um, start from <clears throat> this sort of, uh, of some elements. And, and then the elements are defined um, by adding aspects to them. And the aspects are maybe best comprised in the late document. There's this list of aspects um, somewhere like after midpoint. Um, and to make an make an example, so for example, we take a role and we think what kind of role we would role or roles we would like to in this organization, and there is the concept of identity or functional concept of identity, which is like oh, if you add an identity, consider that do you want there to be a unique identifier that is a name, and then the functionality of that is that this this thing will never. Um, replicate or it's it's different from all the others but uh, identity also could create this consideration that oh we actually utilize a nested identity that you can have a name dot organization or name dot scene dot organization and maybe that would be interesting for how we use identity then there are um many many other aspects uh, they're kind of poured in or like these are interesting structures. They haven't really been organized yet. But like to take another example, um, like there is the aspect of premise, and it's marked as mostly for scenes or offers. And premise is often used as like, oh, you have all these elements and functionality, but you want to add like a description, which is kind of initiating people to understand it uh, or creating a summary of it. and then there can be different approaches to that. There's motifs, like that's a general category for things like issues, themes, topics of interest, questions. And, and here one could think of like, oh, we want to create this role. Um, we have now an um, identity, but we could also have like, um, well, we would actually like to ask people to at least three topics of interest pick two of them freely and one from a list that we have. And then in a particular role, that could be the functionality of like making the role to be. So the idea here is like you have this sort of basic blocks and then you can move to the next steps, which is about filling these blocks like roles. And through that kind of almost step-by-step -step granularly detail what the organization is. And this can be, have many game interactions on that, like you have a structure that everybody in their turn can propose and that there can be negotiation, or it could be like that everybody can put one in and others can react by uh, proposing modifications, etc. This is really kind of like open of like essentially what is the kind of round structures and whatnot. Um, but, but yeah, like, um, but then one of the key things I still want to underline here is that uh, the game is kind of the hardest at its current point, not just because it's a draft, 
because part of the structure, which is actually kind of uh, laid out in the very beginning in the principles part, um, uh, is that a valid move is to start, say, a new role. But it's just as valid move is to say, take if somebody played this game earlier uh, and create created this and this kind of role for the organization, you could make as a move to say modify or use as is that role and make that as a move to your organization. So in a way, like everything that is produced by play here can transform to be uh, um, a token of play for further games. So like however it's physically or otherwise represented, the, the idea is that the game kind of grows and the palette of play grows by the factors that people played. Uh, so somebody has created an interesting role with uh, how they use, say, uh, they have an interesting interaction to create uh, questions for roles. So you play that rather than playing an empty one. So, and, and this is, I think, a, a key structure and kind of an interesting one. It's some, somewhat re resembles some like gnomic like directions, but it's much more, let's say, system uh, like or aggressively towards that kind of direction. Um, and, and I think it structurally works. This is something we've been processing. And then as a final point, from uh, last uh, session's playtesting, we uh, brought in a uh, couple of other considerations, uh, like shortly mentioned in the message. One is that the organization can be played in in the pause or freeze mode, which is like it's on hold, it's paused, and you're proposing a role. But it can also be played in kind of live or flow mode, which is like we press play and uh, and that could be like playing this sort of speculative or serious moment and this is interesting in the sense like somebody proposes and uh, this is kind of happened in the playtest that somebody proposes that we have these kind of let's say questions or topics for for the role and then we press play essentially and play those questions and see how people answer to those questions and this was mostly, I would say, speculative play. And then we can press pause again and come like, oh, that was interesting, but let's modify and then put the piece into the organization. So yeah, okay, that's, that's um, uh, I think, most of the pieces. If, if anybody has something to add, um, yeah. It's just a clarification question. Um, when comparing rules and moves uh, yeah. what what do you see the relationship yeah it's, it's uh, no so, sorry sorry moves and rights rights yeah. oh okay yeah mm -hmm. so like i said the aspect is really poured in and, and there's a lot of probably unnecessary overlap but i was like all of these are kind of worth considering and there's probably more but i was like oh uh, like we had a discussion in the last time, for example, for the stake structure, which is mostly taken from a game called Dungeon World, and uh, how that's interesting, etc. But so, uh, in terms of uh, some rights, like uh, like uh, like said in some of the comments in Telegram, I think the moves and why it's become so central concept in certain game designs is partly because it's it's very much trying to do rights in game fashion. It's not how it's thought or talked about, but like ultimately, if you look at it, it kind of does that. Um, uh, it, it's so in this sense, you could easily say that well, we we have this sort of um, right structures, but how we codify them is more like moves. So it, it like in a way like right in in a very general conceptual fashion, I think it's a good thinking model. It's a good analytic model. Um, uh, towards looking at organizations in general. In terms of um, codifying them, you could have different approaches and styles, and moves is uh, one good one uh, to look at because it has so, so many techniques and they address kind of interesting directions. Uh, but of course, you could have others. 
so roughly speaking i i like analytically and what we talked about very early on in the group i kind of think of the right as a meta level like a very conceptual level thing and not a specific convention of expressing right um and then here these aspects are more on the on the already convention particular style of expression level and trying to steal or take interesting expression styles and techniques um so that would be my own rough expression of that thank you thank you Any other comments, questions? I just shared that's a bit off topic, but the uh, video game dreams, I don't know if you know about it. It's amazing, totally worth checking mm -hmm. out. Just yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, some videos on it. I would I would describe it as a game engine as yeah, a is, game, yeah. kind of, yeah. Yeah. As a super nice mechanic for this jump between freeze and flow modes. Mm -hmm. Uh, which in which you actually the way in which you control the world switches you use a different uh, mechanism with the control in yeah. each separate state it's really interesting yeah yeah um yeah I, I should actually check how they do that because i know about the game but i don't have the particular machine that it runs so like uh i should at least use videos because yeah it's an interesting interesting platform slash game. Was that clear uh, for for an explanation? Did did leave you hanging in some parts and some are there any open questions in terms of things being not understandable? Martin, Dustin. Yeah, my apologies. I have to get going. Um, and yeah, you mentioned asking, it, so it's okay. And you were asking about before, and unfortunately, uh, my connection just stalled there. But uh, I just wanted to say, thank Jakub. Uh, I find it really a fascinating project, and it actually has a lot of parallels with what I'm doing with my doctorate work, and more or less coupling the idea of uh, more or less, you know, how do we represent and abstract these kind of different uh, ways of exchange or kind of alternative economies and you know, what do we think is an effective way to kind of communicate it and have kind of even a symbology attached to it maybe. So um, yeah, so I, I'm really, really curious to hear more and yeah. think about even the ideas about the notion of objects and how objects will be kind of Please yeah visualize there too in some yeah respect. yeah and please feel free yeah. to like chip in on telegram with questions or suggestions mm -hmm. or ideas because yeah this is very much beginnings so it can yeah. be co-created co and co-shaped okay well it's yeah. it's very promising in it's embryonic stages i guess in that case so yeah. cool cool uh yeah. okay so I, i'll catch everyone next week so yeah I'm, yeah no problem like no. like i said yeah. no no problem on having a set time to join so you welcome and we'll continue from there and continue on telegram as well um and sorry my camera is still as usual acting up and it sometimes just crashes and i have to reboot it um, you were saying my name earlier yeah yeah in terms of like the explanation was that uh of the game structure was that uh, I think... understandable I think I understood everything said, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm not sure I understand how everything sits together. That's, so that's okay. I, that's so I, and I'm not sorry about it. I'm just mm -hmm. that's uh, just how I think I should uh, represent my state of uh, um, apprehension of what's going on. Um, but my question would be: Was it so that we would try to kind of play a bit with these things today? Was that yes? I have a proposal. Would, Love, yes. um, so I have a proposal towards that, and and given that we have a um, like, let's keep a smaller example. Like, so what I'm proposing 
if it's okay with everybody, we can talk about that, is to kind of, um, this is more still playstorming, that we, we have some structures and others are um, still ambiguous and we can play around that. But the particular thing I wanted to kind of, uh, or would propose to focus on is the differences between freeze and flow mode, which is also what Pablo kind of mentioned with Dream, is that um, uh, now there, there's like, this is like a game structure. And like I said, it could be played in many ways. Like what is the round structure? How it moves from player to player is almost like a, its own layer, which is probably annoying. It's, it's this kind of normal for game designers kind of state, but it might be uh, sometimes a little bit challenging, but um, I, I will try to help a lot with that. But my proposal would be that we have this sort of elements, the roles, scenes, offers, filters, we don't have to use all of them. And, and we know that aspects can be added into this. Players in the last time can maybe take some initiative to, because it might be harder to Martin to think about how to play them. But if we start with this sense that now we're in the freeze mode, what kinds of moves are interesting in the freeze mode or in this sort of organization as pause? Is it like uh, that every move is an offer? What is the process with an offer made? Um, are there some other ways to think about how to play when the organization is frozen? What is useful for it? and make it kind of almost like short playstorming session around that of proposing different kind of move types, however hazy they can be. And then switch on to the flow mode and, and maybe set a small scene to, to have the flow on and, and then think about what kind of moves, possibly different moves would be useful for that. And that's it. Like that would be kind of like a limited playstorming comparison situations. How does that sound? Um, I need to maybe ask one thing before mm -hmm. you, because I missed the last session uh, and then mm -hmm. a couple of others actually before I, uh, where you were playtesting. The organization that you're speaking of right now, is it, did you already agree on something no. like that it would be for some purpose or anything that it would try to be doing or so? Is a, so is it is am I, so you, you say no? So is it correct that we're basically um, still working on a kind of diagram right now, or so it's not a con it's not a concrete kind of attempt at say you know taking any organization that one would you know want to form maybe in real life. And then just testing how would game structures help us to conceive of that organization, because that I mean, was this yeah. could be something that could be something that I could find very interesting. Yeah, like I mean, of a, an applied uh, example. I mean, it's completely possible to bring in uh, real topics. Like, I think the key thing here to think about is that this game is almost like an organizational generator. Mm -hmm. um, like, and. Um, this is why you can start from empty. You could start from the last play session where we put in these things, like almost like a safe state. Or you could start even from maybe existing organization if you would slightly translate it to the game uh, language. But I don't think that would be too hard and, and so on. So it's, it's really that the game kind of exists on this sort of like an engine to create organizations level. Um, or engine to process organizations also, right? Could take, right? And, and I think practically in this case, like you could bring in topics or ask how could you bring in topics that is like a certain area of your interest. Like if, if it could be like what kinds mm -hmm. of roles people could take in your case and, and kind of guide that process of um, like, what kind of things you would like to be defined in there might be one approach to take it. Or if you have an interest of something happening there and you have some ideas towards it, that could be a proposal towards the scene. But then the question could be like, how could it be kind of in different ways codified in this game language? And what I think that, like that to me would be really kind of interesting because I, maybe it's a it's a kind of deformation that I that I kind of drag along from my being educated in like concrete spaces rather than mm. what I take from the three of you 
to be very, to be very yeah. abstract, I think is in a way. But like it, it feels to me that kind of if I were to, uh, if I could say, you know, we 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 agree between the, now, coincidentally, four of us on on one type of organ or like a particular organization with a purpose that we would like to kind of um, prototype or kind of develop. Yeah. And then kind of you know throw at it all those you know con concepts and like a bit you sure. know i feel it could help me very much kind of understand the mechanics and the mm. potentials and what they could be useful for because you know in the end on my very personal side i'm still interested in understanding these mechanics that we discuss and these you know mm. system concepts concepts um in order to work on an actual yeah. organization that I have been given the mandate to develop. So like for me, the practical case is really interesting and I would feel it could really help me understand this, this abstract treasure that we now, um, mm. you know, in application. I would be completely fine with that, that direction. And I think, uh, it. yeah, it, be slightly different uh, kind of place in case, but I think we could jump into that. Like, uh, and and I, I think you're right in this. It probably would bring you better on board also with the structures. But how do others feel? Like, is that would that be a scenario uh, that we could try and like we others could help in with maybe a little bit more understanding of some of the elements and aspects of of proposing those and so on. And we can see how it plays and kind of codified as it goes along. Uh, but yeah, how are you uh, okay, willing to jump into that scenario? Yes, definitely. The, we had a sort of similar situation once with Jakub. I don't know if you were there, Martin, but we analyzed this 3D printing. Mm. I guess it's an organization company. I'm not yeah. sure. And that yeah. was a very, I would say, prolific session, mm -hmm. gameplay session. So yeah, yeah I, I would totally be up to start with uh, a real case and work with it. Uh, as a sort of like, a, I'll, I'll take the kind of game mastery hat for a second, which is interpretational, how it's, it, it's here, but I created this place. I mean, and, and what I'm mostly thinking of doing kind of facilitation and proposing that this could start by Martin, you telling just in normal language, just how you want to tell it, like what kind of things you have thought about it or desire for it, this organization that could be the material to start from. Uh, yeah, and I could try to go to completely uninventive mode um and just talk about, you know i mean in in a way um i i came already uh, to this with saying that there's a certain you know uh, residency program that i've been taking care of and this is in a in a revolution or not revolution but evolution mode right now and i um i consider like for example like since we started to talk i've been thinking about like the partners there as roles and I've been wondering, never, you know, never really having the time to jot and, and diagram that out. But I've been thinking of like, what are their rights? What yeah. are the, you know, like, and and so like those types of things would be super interesting. So I don't want to kind of maybe it's maybe it's also not super good if I would drag it all too close to where I actually operate, even for yeah. myself to keep a bit of distance from that. But if we'd say, I don't know, um, an educational entity, for example, yeah. like. Right, I mean that has something to do with, you know, learning about stuff, recording stuff, archiving or like conveying, maybe publishing, uh, things like that, having a memory. Um, then who are the who are the participants? How do they organizationally relate to one another? I mean, it it I I suppose as I speak that would get you know very concrete, and then but maybe that's just fun. Like maybe it's I mean you 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 certainly capable of resolving all these things into you know their proper um conceptual location but uh i think that could like any like an let, let's say an educational slash research some some type of an entity of of that sort yeah and, yeah. and maybe if, if we need the thematics i know like Jacques, Jacob, you are in the in the in the financial uh domain Maybe that could be, uh, I don't know, Pablo, where, where, where your anchors are 
content-wise? Good question. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say. I'm I was finance. rather question, <laughs> not to me. <make> <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, just to clarify, yeah. Martina, I wouldn't say I'm in finance. It's more like exploring, kind of, yeah, alternative mm -hmm. ways of capturing value or, <laughs> or finding mm -hmm. viability of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, because my my place is is what I, uh, what I consider kind of space spatial practice. But that doesn't mean only kind of shifting, you know, drawing stuff and putting material on top of one another or next to one another. But also what we're doing right now to me is kind of spatial practice. I mean, we're 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 prepping um, perspectives through which yeah. to perceive. So, but like, okay, so now making it more complicated than it needs to be, but like some kind of an educational, if we conceive of an educational uh, facility that maybe has a space of sorts. It possesses mm. a space of sorts, or it possesses like multiple spaces, which could be, you know, one or a couple of them could be physical spaces located someplace, but others could be digital or like, you know, online spaces as we co inhabit at this moment. I don't even know, Pablo and Jakub, where you are based. Uh, I'm in Helsinki. Um, but um, I don't know, give, does that give like a minimal, you know, like a. Yeah. yeah. Like I think there are several directions there already. Like one one would be like I'm just kind of listing from what you mentioned. Um the uh the, the kind of partners as roles and that could utilize even like well a specific partner and one could then imagine what how to define that role and what would be interesting there. Also like Serious of whimsical, serious of speculative thinking, um, and and it, yeah, it could also use like, if not a specific partner, or like almost like a partner type, like yeah. oh, I, I'm thinking this. Actually, I'll actually put this also in the notes. I'm making notes at the same time to two places. Is like maybe it's good to make like um, a particular. And types uh, it's an interesting difference, mm, but yeah. So maybe the, maybe the phrasing would not maybe be partners as roles, but the roles of a, the role of a partner. Right? Mm, yeah, partner is then a role, and then like for example, if we, if I think now consider of the, of the residency, there's like there are kind of supporting partners, there are production part like supporting mm. funding. There's other yeah. supporting uh, things, and there are production partners, and there are curatorial partners. Um, so there's already a lot of roles. So yeah, uh, and 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 potentially there can be, uh, you can even create it as a kind of branching structure that there, you know, that there. Let's put it this way to simplify it. There's say a role of a participant or a member or whatever. Yeah, and every uh, partner gets that. But then in addition, they might get another role because yeah. that's uh, that's actually. That's even normal. We have multiple roles. Like in certain meeting, we're a meeting partner, and in another content, we are the graphic designer, and we actually switch roles. Um, sometimes we combine them. Like so, this sort of modularity is just like think, oh, these rights go here, but I can, I also have this. So if if situation allows, I can also use those rights and so. On. So that's yeah. one way to think about it as well. But let's, we could like start breaking down that i mean the other direction is also spaces and like listing of the spaces and then think what would be interesting for them like physical spaces what if happens when you kind of make them into active things like adding rules and creating them into scenes and like i think it's a definitely an interesting mm -hmm. one um that could be used for but we could start with the roles maybe that's that's uh that's an is um like an easier one but, but uh, let's start with the question, like, what kind of desires you would have for the partners? And this can be for all the partners, or it can be a particular type of partner, whatever. Comes Sorry, what did you say? What desires did you, say you would have for the partner? Like, like, in terms of like, what kind of interaction action you would like from them, whether it's all them, particular one, etc. 
you asking me personally now or yeah or? yeah like essentially you're feeding the material and we're kind of oh, step okay. by step kind of yeah. like so that's my uh, role right now yeah we're detailing this like and getting it closer like yeah. to to kind of more lego lego blocky pieces if you want. yeah so what so i'm i think what what's been interesting to me um is how what type of engagement is felt by each partner like what type of assumption that they are part of this particular like so i'm trying to now i'm, I'm looking back at my residency uh, and like trying to to pitch that forward into what model we are creating right now so mm -hmm. what i've been thinking about with that with the residency is like what type of engagement is felt by each partner like um how do they feel to be part of the thing do they conceive of themselves as you know active shapers or contributors or you know is it the ownership question in a way so is it is it i would so if you ask me about the desires then that would be for example something that i would really want that like every if even if they're just kind of a supporting role that they would feel that they would find to have a stake in the thing and and to be hmm, contributing in a kind of formative way to it same thing goes to you know whoever would quote unquote attend the, that that educational entity um that basically all all type of kind of all questions or content all memory uh would be kind of co-created with them meaning that the organization itself and i think you, you you might find an echo of a question that i that i uh wanted to try to bring up earlier in in one of our talks um that the organization would kind of be auto evolutionary or auto evolving you know that it would kind of self-script the forward in time mm -hmm. i think that's an experience i'm making but i think that would also be a desire that i would have um if i were now to be uh you know patterning out what it is that we're that we're not talking about i don't want to be the only one but i'm i'm, I'm happy to uh to say those those few things because they are really close to kind of what i'm trying to understand and trying to kind of mm. realize actually this is uh, yeah this is rather interesting of course th those are large topics and they could go into many directions but if i think about this structurally now mm. like uh one thing to keep in mind, like uh, with this structure, it's also some, for some other structures, but structures that are highly modular, that there is a certain kind of thinking that kind of enhances their usage. And of course, this OBOG is actually highly modular. So, like you can think of organization as one thing, everything you do, or you can organize just one, one thing, like for example, organize how is the creation of memory taking place and you treat that as like oh here we take these kind of roles and we get this kind of rights and mm -hmm. you're then only concern, uh, uh, concerning that and and that can be almost like it, it's the this is the matter of lego block like you're building that but then you place that building your building into a larger lego village with other buildings and that's actually the other thing you're, you're organizing so it's it's a kind of modular thinking which is useful here and i think it might be may, might make like an interesting playground i'm thinking this practically is to take some of these sort of i think interesting fertile but also like potentially different topics like your auto evolutive um, um for example and then <clears throat> think about almost as those as mini games or mini organizations like what kind of game people would play like in the widest sense of game and play to um to have an auto evolutive structure and like for example if you then um as an example um this is a little bit like loosely now attaching to the current document but i can i could translate everything i'm saying to that language of the obok but, but just to keep it in normal is that um like evolution is change and if there is um uh, uh, a kind of playful rules that these partners visitors whatever le leave something or insert something and if that's something that is inserted becomes somehow active it's you know it could be just 
and it can be useful that it's you know a, a memory and that grows a memory document but those kind of things can easily turn into passive but um, what if they they do this they, they have this right I'm, I'm brainstorming here they, they have this right to create one operation that the organization then repeats it's almost like a ritual like the people in the existing organization will repeat um, well at least several times like you can put different rules here but in a way they leave a practice and that practice has certain kind of like oh we'll uh take this practice and do it but then we have the right to mutate like uh, to mutate it, mm -hmm. to modify it like uh and and that becomes an interaction in itself like they create something that takes place in an organization like in the language of opal this could be a scene and and doesn't we don't have to go that deeply to that uh, but we can talk about it in this sort of normal language but they create some kind of a uh, practice and then uh, like the for this practice the organization has accepted that when these come from these people but uh, there is a specific day specific time specific place whatever it is where the pe people who are left in the organization will conduct this practice like uh, and that that might be uh actually something that affects the organization it, it can be of course symbolic but it can be very practical it can be like uh something that is proposed as a practice of inside the organization's basic functionality and then the organization at least tries it but then it has the, the right to modify it mm -hmm. uh, that would not be a, sorry go no no do say no, that that would like I'm 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 trying to kind of you know circle circle into that mm. now from, from uh, that would now be a kind of highly codified uh, example of how that could work this kind of memory creation and in, in a specific way of you know uh, leaving this there was an artwork I think at some point where where a, a guy made it was commissioned to do an artwork for a, I believe it was a guy could have been a woman else uh, make an artwork for a museum and what they did is. Um, Order the museum to buy a cat, and mm. then the museum had a cat, and that was how it worked. And I think that's quite nice. But uh, just to say, in terms of like how how to retain mem memory, like in in a way, like what's happened, what's been happening with the residency that I'm involved, involved in is that that um, basically each season had a theme or a topic or a question mm -hmm. or like a set of set of those. Then came the residents with their independently formulated and independently conducted researches and projects and presentations and events that, that all went through and those basically informed the next year but mm. like pretty 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 closely like that so it's been really kind of without you know laying a rule space down but I'd, maybe that's what i'm interested to understand how can i kind of um understand what formulation has been already going on uh there has been this kind of this memory um created and i think yeah so i i don't know what else to say about that but like this that maybe what i what i would what i would what i kind of um, a, a thing that puzzles me about that um and again i'm I'm trying to stay on on topic and not like talk about the residency but like talk about how these things can be understood by way of these game mechanics how they mm. could be described that way and maybe progressed into new forms um a question that has arisen from this experience for me is like for example if we stay on a memory topic like how in what forms does this memory exist is it only me who just kind of happens to be the benefit benefiter of that memory because I'm the kind of constant uh, through the years of, of of being in the project and the partners, or like does it exist in you know, or, or rather like I mean I know where I suppose I know where it exists, which is in all the participants, in mm. one way or the other, uh, or the partakers or the partners or members of that organization, whatever minimal uh, atomic the definition of a role, but how uh like what part is in the spaces how can it be communicated forward and and these types of things mm. and I, I think that's but i don't know maybe this is going too far but like i for example just the, just the, the kind of the idea of these different member roles mm. you yeah. know like 
there are so many already, like even if I think about it now, um, that could that could already be fantastic to just kind of look at like, yeah, a, yeah. like kind of like an arbitrary educational entity and think who are the participants and how can they be structurally organized toward one another and how does that make a political model? How does that make a mnemonic model? And yeah. Yeah, mm. I, uh, and it, uh, like like looking at the roles in that manner probably would be quite fertile as well. Like uh, in terms of this sort of like what I said being codified, well, from my side, I would call that semi-codified. But the key thing is not whether it's codified or not. Really, the, that is about the expression. But the same structure can exist as like very codified, semi-codified, but it can also soften itself to less codified in itself. Like the reason I put it in those terms is I, that's generally how I think about these things. And, and I find that all these levels have their use, but I also find that actually going to the slightly more nuts and bolts, slightly more Lego blocks side makes things more flexible. Like, um, so it doesn't even mean that ultimately how it comes to people is in this Lego block form. Um, but it can mean that where you kind of see the different possibilities is like looking at it almost like Lego blocks, then moving the pieces around and then later putting a coating on it, which makes it less Lego blocky. This is actually, by the way, completely normal in computer game making as like, um, like, uh, like there's a lot of Lego blockiness going underneath the surface of like what might appear as sort of semi-real environment, but but so yeah, like it. So in this sense, like, a, or for example, whether it's the roles or whether it was it, the, the approach I was telling about, like like that, essentially a role of our, somebody coming in has this right of creating its practice, which then. Uh, kind of is is taken by the organization uh, in this context that they they perform that that is sort of Lego blocky way but it's for me like it's a good way of thinking about it um, to see these possibilities and I think it's similar for the roles like one could uh, like see okay what do they actually do and then think about um, what kind of blocks it breaks to in order to think about what possibilities are, are around them ex exist around them or what could combinations be made could completely different roles be made so that's that's the main thing it's 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 getting things to the level that they are editable in a way like mm -hmm. or easier easier to edit that's that's the goal but like we could have like maybe it's a uh different exercise because it could be larger to take the roles and break them although we could maybe take one of them and uh, break them apart, and, uh, maybe in the uh, remaining time of the session. If you have have such a like an interesting case, or however you would pick it. Um, like that. Uh, you mean me again, personally? No. Y yeah, if you're feeling this, yeah. I, I just feel I'm occupying a lot of space right now. Um... This happens when you take a case and you're you're feeding the material. <laughs> so then, Jakob and Pablo, with your permission. Um... Yeah, I find it um, useful to be having actually more concrete material, but I'm just uh, sorry that I want to jump off right now. So... Yeah, 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 it's okay. I mean, we're already. Um, let's let's actually have kind of a short point on this because I, I do think this kind of runs it's kind of would be its own case like because it's a larger thing like uh and maybe it's good to have this almost like a session of its own like to look mm -hmm. at this um uh we could maybe start like for the last ones uh, or uh because we're kind of running long at least start it or see where it would be going for example I'm picking a role or gathering this material and then we can think if this is the next case or whatever we do um, do next time, we can talk about that. But um, that might be a good uh, kind of ending because I don't think we have enough time to go much like long uh, on this, this position. But I, I still think like it, 
like if you for example martin would list like shortly how what kind of different operators roles you would see in the organization right now yeah and maybe before jacob you said you had to jump right yeah yeah um may i make a structural proposition how yeah. about if we would kind of now for let's say the last uh, maybe 20 minutes or so mm. if we make two two hour session kind of uh focus really on kind of being exact and concrete on a, on a particular case, just forgetting a bit um, the conceptualization of it for a moment and then coming back on this the next time and then focusing really on what has then happened in terms of kind of game terminology. And then okay. maybe progressing a bit so that we would have a phase that we can really kind of commit and make mistakes and lose track and go off topic, but like try out to you know play a bit with with what could be a case, and then kind of look back on it and reapply uh, what all the logics that we have already kind of um, what you mainly have brought together. Um, like to me, anyway, it could feel like a possible way. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like um, like I'm fine with that, um, uh, and. And for Jakob, uh, if you have to leave, like, uh, like, mm -hmm. if you have further ideas later, also on the next topic, etc., like, you could post them on the Telegram. Yeah, yeah. And and I was, yeah, and one practical, like, you can just put a like a nudge or a push for comments on the um, uh, the kind of the the game side or the digital side of things, like. Uh, because it might bring also other people into commenting and interest. So okay, yeah. it can be a short message because they can then support that or like write another message. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. By the way, Martin, um, you said two hour sessions, but is it like, is it the original length two hours or um, is it one and a half hours and we go over or is it two hours and I'm oh. jumping off too early? Yeah, no, no, there... no, one and, no, one and a half and then a check-in point. Okay. Like okay. the, uh, like the, when we discuss the rules, it's like the, the default is one and a half. But then there's a checking point that people can continue, and then everybody can like come for the time, whatever it is, in ten minutes. Like the, those would be my con uh, concise version of the rules. As okay. We yeah. So no problem. Thanks. So um, thank you very much, uh, yeah. Beko and everyone. Yeah. So, thanks. Um, looking forward to yeah. the next. Session. Yeah. So, bye bye. Same. Um, um, but yeah, Martin. Uh, I I sort of got, but um, uh, like I didn't quite get. Like maybe Pablo, you got what is what was it exactly you were proposing in terms of um doing now? Uh, I might have misunderstood it. Like uh, um, I might have also just misunderstood it myself. But I just wanted to kind of like if we if we now kind of try and kind of um try and think up. An organization with a purpose, for example, such as an educational body of some mm. sort, and like focus on um, the question of roles or the dimension of roles and what roles okay, one okay. Could find in that. And then one would just really go into concretely, we will probably begin, likely and probably inevitably, begin from the kind of hierarchical and old fashioned political. Uh, assumptions that we have brought with us from the academy or I don't know where we where we get them from but like then try to kind of dissolve them using the vocabulary of the game of the rights mm. of the you know of the offers or whatever um, and kind of maybe progress to a to a new image of what how such organization can be put together but like for the time being try focusing on that more than on analyzing what is now happening, is this an mm. aspect, is it a filter, but just that kind of devote for a second yeah, yeah. to kind of the, the pra practical kind of imagination of, of a potential organization. And then next week, maybe go back in again and like see what we, what, what did happen and what, you know, what other kind of pathways would they open. Yeah, I, I, I would have a kind of proposal how to start towards that. I would not start from the, the uh, like what is the existing. The one thing one could do from the existing is listing different kind of key things, like key, 
key roles and key scenes. They don't have to be in these game terms, but just how people understand it. Like, for yeah. example, you can think of a lecture. You can generalize the lecture to a session because it doesn't have to be necessary. It could be a workshop. Like, you'd have a session and just um, and then session underneath. You could have like uh subcategories like a lecture workshop etc um um but okay so um and then of course for roles once again using normal language you can have like traditionally you have like a student um exactly yeah those type of things yeah teacher and the teachers depending on the school can break down into like I'm just putting norm, like like pragmatic teacher or lesson teacher, let's call it like which is just a teacher, and then you have like a thing like a professor professor which is more like a general operative, um, and then you have um, in the roles you have also administrate admin, and this this breaks down into like uh, just like a clerk or what would be a good term like a of office persons to um to department deciders heads um like these kind of things uh um these are these are good playing pieces because as you can see, they are already sl slightly turning into the the Opok language. They don't have to yet, but but like in a way, like it's actually I think it's interesting to think about the session as a scene and a lecture as a type of a scene. Not that we have to do it immediately, but I can see it translates, and it's an interesting possibility because. Yeah. Um, so, for example. And then maybe so sorry to, to interrupt uh, back, no, but no, like, maybe then also because that's what i meant what where, where i would also have begun in in, uh, in in counting down those roles but then try to trying to corrode them also trying yeah, to yeah, mix yeah. responsibilities trying to kind of you know bastardize uh mandates and yeah and and for that like just as a as a starter um like two directions like you you could you could start from uh defining kind of member which is not yet necessarily a student teacher etc but maybe a component that is part of uh, everyone and yes i'm talking in this sort of structural language but it doesn't have to end up that way but if you get give a right that everyone has has the right to propose a session and that session could be a lecture and a workshop. Uh, and then then in this session part, you could have that a session is summoned or spawned or created if wherever the sessions are offered, like say enough people put like their participation in it. Uh, I'm not saying that that has to be the structure, but that, that is already a structure where you have uh, given the right for these sessions for everyone, and then you create a certain logic of deciding upon them, but of course you could have a different logic for that. So that's, for example, one very, very quickly sketch that way towards um, a difference, but but it's it's an only one example to illustrate this. Kind it's already super interesting because I mean, like right now, uh, you're giving basically a right mm -hmm. uh, to to the generic member role. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the generic member role in 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 the case of of this also includes funders. Mm -hmm. It also mm -hmm. like people who would otherwise just have a passive, you know, almost kind of observational role. They we play a role in their budget, but that doesn't mean that they uh, that they um, have the right to propose a session within this educational institution and so this for me is already like brilliantly exciting yeah like yeah. that's never how i would have conceived of a relationship with a with a funding supporter yeah uh, yeah yeah there and you potentially go. even that's... cleaner and like they could have there you go right, exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean just as, just as a kind of small example we had mm. this this opening which prevented me from partaking in on on, on last friday yeah. and 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 since i had been you know rather closely 
involved on the ground uh, in, in, in building it, this exhibition that we opened, yeah. uh, I made it a bit of a point to kind of in, the, in, the, in my little 45 second opening speech uh, to, uh, to make sure that it was understood that the people who painted the walls and who mounted the electricity were like central figures mm, yeah, in, yeah. in conceiving because without them it would not have so like j just kind of as an anecdote kind of mm. but just to say that i recognize the significance of this without maybe being able to structuralize it mm. but i think that's that's a really really good thing that like every like that for me if i go forward with this residency mm. that for me would be a, a significant potential addition mm. saying that we work together in such way that any one partner involved in this can mm. propose a session of some sort. Yeah, Fantastic. and then if the deciding of the session for, I'm still using this example, is like whatever names gather there, it could be something else, but then one can use that to illustrate that then if it says names of members, then it means that the cleaner and the electrician can also be part of the deciding whether the session happens or not, as equally as the whatever professors and so on. Yeah. Like, so this is how why the Lego pieces pieces help because it helps yeah. you to think about this design uh, in in this kind of way. Of course, I'm, I've been doing this for many years. Like the, the language is there, but it's 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 kind of like a uh, like now we can also think of all kinds of variants here. Like what if there is uh, several like couple of different logics of how a session uh, is. Uh, becomes uh, live from its offering. One is like names gathered there, but there could be some other other ways. Well, and... well so like before maybe that even we could like, I mean, there's a kind of design choice now being made and mm -hmm. that is introduction of the generic member role. Mm -hmm. One could also just say, how would an organization look? Because that's a political design choice, right? Yeah. Like so, then when, without even leaving that level and progressing to the next, one could just say, so what? What if there were no generic member role? What if there were just kind of siloed members that exist in some sort of parallelity? The rights of you know the group of one does not necessarily you know uh, trans trans translate as a right for the other group. So they are separate, like. You know, there, there are rights that are not shared. For example, the right mm. of producing a session would be limited to curatorial partners. Yeah, like, and then, but, like then you have a kind of politically very different design of the organization. Yeah, and also the, this kind of design language, because the, here the game is kind of functioning as a form of expression, thing, allows yeah. for actually multiple expressions, which is a good thing. It's, it's, it, so yeah. for example, you could say there is no generic member role. But then you could say that this particular rights of proposing a session occur in maybe everyone, maybe certain ones of the roles, and then you have a different take on the design. Like yeah. if it occurs in everyone, it's kind of doing the same as the member. Or you could have, rather than having a general universal member, you could have a like general, but not 100%, like you could have an active and passive or whatever they're called. Yeah. And, and then like all the students and professors but maybe also the cleaners get an active and maybe some other kind of let's say smaller funders or people who are outside but kind of or people who just acknowledge the organization like show goodwill to it they might get maybe passive is a bad term but supporters yeah. like active and supporters and they get a little bit of a different right so now you've broken the member into two and then you can fine tune it that way yeah, um, or you could also what, what 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 just came to my mind. What could also be done is that you kind of basically, uh, you know, would try to kind of um, compile a rather comprehensive list of all rights that there were to be had or to be given or to you know, uh, and then work in a kind of subtractive way until the point of no more chaos. Like mm -hmm. so, you would kind of take the the generic member role across the board and then vertically all the rights that they might be had, mm -hmm. and then you test. Uh, and yeah. you subtract rights until it doesn't feel chaotic anymore. Yeah, yeah. So then you have yeah. kind of your kind of regime of governance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Negatively uh, expressed. In a way. Yeah, like mm -hmm. a playstorming mode. This is also why I often think about these things separately. Like, how does it play, and what is the kind of structure of the game? Because it's yeah. almost like a different design. Like, you could have this structure, but then if you add, like, oh, we have these weeks where every day we're changing 
rules a bit. It's like the yeah, place, nice place storming week. And then after that, we have this sort of one session of checkup where we might add some modifications to the existing rules. Maybe they return as is, or mm. maybe some of the tests kind of affect it. And now we have a different structure because we changed the level of, you know, how we play with the structure. How um, do you, how would you make recall in like a game uh, language, game term language, this kind of kind of temporal algorithmization of what that you just kind of proposed, like uh, like at a point stuff will be changed or after so and so many moves stuff will be changed or at this phase. So like, because I don't find that yet in the document that there's this kind of temporal axis that, 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 that is taken into concern. You said yeah. you brought up, a, you brought up a, a, a game, was it called Flux? What was it? Mm -hmm. The game yeah. that was it Flux? The one that changes uh, you, yeah. you play by changing the role. Exactly. Role. And so, but there was not like in the in the description of how it worked. There was no, there was no, if I remember well, kind of temporal uh, dimension that was just kind of emergent as the game went on. That changes would kind of occur by way of continuing to make moves, right? But um, but what you now said is that one would determine certain intervals. Um, so that would be in, in 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 terms of the of the vocabulary that we have now collected. Would that be a new addition? Would that be a new thing? Or yeah, like essentially, you're right that it's not in the document, and I've kind of like I should have explicated it more clearly, but I've kind of referred it to to that omission like on the side, saying that uh, for example, how would you play this? Is it around, etc.? It's not yet there, and it's partly not there because it's almost like its own area of design yeah if you would talk to a board game designer they would kind of talk in the same way that you often kind of separate this because like you know like you do the same structure but you don't have this week it's a different institution it will also be a different game and and but having this separation allows to kind of move pieces in one level let's call this how it runs level the process level and the structural level and and like you're able to change something in the process level but the structural level can they stay the same so you have this sort of modularity or vice versa and that offers design flexibility in this sense and that's that's kind of reflected in the document that it's more about the structure now but then it's say, like it's not really written there but i've been kind of referring offhand that it's it's like the process level is still uh, up to design and could I, actually yeah, have think, multiple forms yeah i think uh, that would be, like for me that would be super interesting to take into like i'm and there's a couple of games that i now think of um the one would be musical chairs mm -hmm. uh, where you have <laughs> so this kind of random time and the other one i don't know if you know that it was one of my favorite games as a kid on the on the kid's birthday it was chocolate eating with knife and fork do you know that no, I haven't heard. So you, would, so you have your kid's birthday and you have maybe, you know, between five and 10 uh, friends invited and everybody gathers around the table and there's a fully, like a full bar of chocolate packed mm -hmm. and everything, like yeah. as you get it from the shop. Yeah. On the table, there is um, a knife and a fork and a hat and woolen mittens and a die. And so the die goes around from kid to kid mm -hmm. and whoever throws a six has to take the hat the mittens, the knife and the fork and eat, start eating the chocolate from starting from opening the pack with the knife. But the die continues. And the next time a six is thrown, mm. the hat is being torn off and mittens are being torn off and you know, knife and fork go further. And so wow. there's also this kind of random kind of interruptive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which if, is like, and, and, I, and I'm thinking if we speak about this kind of educational entity, Mm -hmm. that there would be this random kind of uh, like alarm sound and suddenly the faculty is in charge of proposing the new curriculum or suddenly yeah. the cleaning or the the, the 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 janitors are in charge of of uh, proposing for a new curriculum yeah mm. yeah and this is interesting also in the terms of the game because i can see those still being seen but they're seen uh, idea is permutation like what like mm -hmm. what comes in, uh, comes out differently. Uh, and it's totally possible um, to do that, like uh, as a structure. And, and I do think it's an interesting uh, area to think about. 
but I wanted to because we've been hogging the airways. Uh, yes. uh, uh, so Pablo, I want to give you space because, like, sorry about <laughs> being so rushy with this comment. No, this has been great. Like, uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. I mean, many things have gone uh, through my mind. Like this right thing that you mentioned now of like having this interruption that changes things. I, I'm thinking, I was thinking of this in terms of being, it, it might be very productive to sort of like change the essence because we've been talking in terms of roles. Mm -hmm. so what if, for example, we have here the admin role and there's department deciders, right? Yeah. We think of that as a role. But what if department decision becomes a move, which yeah, is yeah, what, yeah. I, what I think you just talked about, you yeah, know? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, so making this sort of like, mutations of the roles into moves or into scenes, right? Yes. What if yeah. memory making is a role and there's the memory maker? Yes. Yeah. What if, I think this could be very productive with this uh, sort of like um, list that we have right here. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's it. No, no, like you can call it a short comment. You're using really well this that there are many ways to express the same direction, but then a certain kind of way has certain strengths. Like, what if the memory maker was a role, or what if, uh, like, uh, uh, like the whatever the decisions are are moves, what are the strengths of putting it as a move versus in uh, as a scene, and we nice. can choose between those. Yeah, I I also was thinking like um because this idea of the general member, I think it's very political, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Like, what if one of the things that all members have is the possibility of bringing things to the memory of the institution, right? Mm -hmm. So this, this would in turn become a sort of like accountability mechanism because, okay, you had great exhibitions, only curators have curatorial uh, roles, but mm -hmm. everyone can make a memory, right? So maybe some part of the staff creates a memory that this uh, exhibition was extremely um stressful for them and it was very badly organized for them so then the memory remains of this great exhibition that has mm -hmm. like an exploitative component to it right yeah so i i just uh, like that idea of what becomes a general um capability for every member mm -hmm. can function as an accountability mechanism that flattens not flattens hierarchy but brings a, a sense of um of justice i would mm. say i what i if i just i love what you just said pablo and i just want to make a little um, footnote maybe for us all in terms of this kind of political interpretation because if we say this is political then we know or i guess we assume that it's kind of it has a kind of socialist or maybe communist kind of you know the general so it's a particular political yeah yeah all the other settings are also political in that they are differently particular political what for me the promise is in, in this kind of flexing exercises we're doing right now mm. that we might come to other politicals yeah yeah that's yeah. what for me is the desire in this in this whole like looking at organizations that way yeah, that yeah, yeah. kind of you know crowbar uh you know any of the political imagery yeah uh, yeah organizational expressions um be that as action or as role i think this is fantastic right now yeah and and it's really kind of like um I mean, political is both the system used and the kind of ethics of that system. And we usually kind of amalgamate those thoughts together in, in normal mm -hmm. sense. But, but usually whatever the system is, is it whether it's loose or strict or whatever, but the system still is the kind of generator of the political. And, and, and for this sense, like, like having this sort of tailorability, these kind of approaches build, it allows to approach the political imagination in new ways because like you said like the member uh, having like these certain rights uh for everybody because everybody is a member has a kind of political uh direction to it but it's tailorable because it depends on what rights do you put on the member on the other hand having like larger structures like active and supporter uh rather than the member and then making some div division there is a different political it might be nuanced slightly less uh like um like more brought uh away from the uh direction of the member and a couple of steps back but then 
once again, that there is a whole tailorability of what is in the active and what is in the supporter. But they could be broken into three, or like you said, there is no general categories, but everything is in in individual roles. And like like in that range, there's a huge amount of political, much of it yet unconventionalized, or doesn't have no. this sort of high category term in itself. But they are kind of uh, broadable into this sort of um, basis of functioning, a basis of behavior, basis of, of operation, human interaction level through mm. this this kind of um, approach. And I think like another thing that like um, we've now not uh, touched upon, but, but but might as well. And I'm a little bit like I'm not super sympathetic with it, but I'm a bit curious at the same time. Is this um, like attaching cost to certain things like token token to be spent on certain stuff i i think i'm not i'm not like super crazy about it because i feel that it might just be the door to repeating certain capitalist motives that i might not be so fond of but uh and it is also maybe in a, in a case like an institutional uh an educational uh, entity is maybe not really the most attractive thing to think yeah. about, but it might be for other types of organizations. I don't know, especially ones where you maybe have larger uh, um, kind of participant bodies. But um, you, but I, 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 I love this. I love what just happened. Sorry, this was what I kind of maybe had kind of uh, hoped to happen, and I missed every every moment when it did. So yeah. thankful for being uh, here for this uh, today. This is amazing. Like, yeah, like actually a short addition to that token, I agree with that it's ultimately always better, even though it can be in the beginning awkward to start kind of playing around. And not strictly playing, but at least playing around with things because it brings new ideas. But in just to open the thinking a bit on the token, Another kind of example, this starts from the member similar political range. If you have a token structure where everybody is a member, uh, is given two tokens a month or 10 or whatever a month. And then one of the openings of the token is if there are the sessions, if people put their tokens, which everybody gets to or 10 a month into the session, those sessions are also funded. Now, in the political spectrum, we're back again into a similar range than the original member was. I pick it because it's an easy example to make, but it points out how even with tokens, and probably maybe token could be an element uh, in this structure, there is this, um, uh, like in the level of elements, maybe the fifth element, but, um, but even with tokens, there is the designability, uh, and it doesn't necessarily have the capitalist right. Uh, uh, right. Or it doesn't buy the capitalism in, as a wholesale uh, yeah. thing. Uh, it it can be entered into the similar range of designability, um, and that's just like a short illustration example of that. Yeah, there was a there was an example I, I was made aware of. I think maybe in 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 the money lab, uh, mm. also. Um, or someplace else, doesn't matter, like of, a, of, a, um, of an experiment where there was put negative incentive on saving. There was, like, so to yeah. speak, by way of which yeah. it's a positive incentive on circulating. Uh, yeah. And then I think also what you're saying is basically this, uh, I mean, it was maybe from the same, uh, same example, like as soon as you started, oh, is that what it's called? Demo rush. Yeah, I believe yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's the official financial term for it nice. yeah. I, no that that i like i never heard before of, of that and i thought that was really interesting <laughs> yeah. um and then also this um that as you just said also it was part of i think that example also it, if you join that uh, that kind of circuitry of a, mm. of a particular currency you are given a start capital mm. and then you you can kind of um, accumulate i i've been i don't know have any of you taken part in these trust um, Twitch streams on um, where they've been experimenting with uh, interactivity of Twitch. They had a, uh, have you been there Pablo? I saw it in Monilove. It looked amazing. 
yeah yeah I've, i was yeah. i think those experiments that they made and um there was actually a very nice they had a tokenized system and i think you were basically so what they were trying to do in general was to see how uh, a twitch format which is as i understand mainly a frontal thing like there's a sender mm -hmm. and then there's a number of receivers yeah um how you could make that interactive and then they had a i think a unity uh, uh engine mm -hmm. That yeah, was totally. kind of harvesting uh, the chat, and you could type into the chat, and that would go through the Unity and influence the three D environment, which was where the avatar was placed. Mm. Uh, amazing setup, and um, and they um, there were certain mechanics. I think it was. Big, I think you you could at a point when you had so and so many coins, you could call a certain command. And that would cause what was it a butterfly to appear mm. in the, the 3d thing and you would uh, accrue those tokens simply by watching the stream you would just by being there you would be given this currency and like now like there's one and maybe a second project in which i'm involved that has a, a physical space and a, and a potential community to be built around that physical mm. space of the subject at least partially and I've been really kind of fascinated by these token models and how to kind of um, facilitate both senses of ownership and, and participation, uh, uh, maybe by way of them. And I'm just thinking now, like if I think back of the shared workshops that I've been building in the past with, with friends, somehow time spent mm. on, you know, cleaning the workshop and so that it already functioned as a token of sorts. It was never, you know, numerized or like, how do you say, mm. like put yeah. it to a number. But it might as well. So now yeah. you have you have a space where you know there is um, a workshop to be constructed or whatever stuff, and then certain people take part in it, and you just give them like you know five things mm -hmm. for every hour they spend uh, doing that, and suddenly they have a certain capital and yeah. can yeah. make decisions on stuff. I don't know how you then kind of go back to the real world. I don't know that yet, but it, it feels kind of somehow there is a. Um, it's maybe something to be found there. Yeah. yeah, there, there is like, um, I mean, there is a lot in this topic. Like, actually, these sort of platforms of getting tokens for viewing has been present longer. Like, it's said, like, it's not kind of known even in crypto circles. But there is, for example, there was this early period of making, uh, trying to make replacements for YouTube based on crypto, and many of them had as one of the basic functionalities is watching generates tokens. Um, right. And then they had different categories of tokens, but a couple, a couple of key things. I, th I think it's an interesting direction, but uh, this is one of the reasons why I kind of talk a lot about rights because then it matters what are the rights of the token. Yeah, and that's actually the design space again. Like right. a like if uh, if the tokens only like in some of these platforms are kind of way to. Uh, like support um, 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 a broadcaster, then it's kind of back to capitalism. It might not be bad, yeah. but it's but if you have a way to affect the world, then it's a little bit. But it's a right again to write to uh, someone a butterfly. Uh, but then it's a question like, are they only cosmetic or something? But how you design this are like thinking of the, the tokens as instruments of rights. They become these sort of mobile instruments of rights, and this is—I don't kind of open that can of worms here, but I, there's many reasons why I think it's—it's it's a healthy way to start to think about tokens that they are actually not that complicated. They—they they are really instrumentations of rights, and they have this. Uh, their extra strengths are about mobility, transactability, etc. But ultimately, what they're doing is that they are carriers, vessels of rights and that kind of opens their designability to the same range as a role with the same range as a mm -hmm. scene etc um are they are they would you would you would you call if, characterize them as like role modifiers potentially modifiers are really anything but they do the modification of having rights like like i mean if you have a if you have a yeah if so if you if you if you gain a particular amount of tokens Mm -hmm. And that would afford you additional amounts of rights. You might be kind of transitioning from one role to another role. Potentially, so, or it could be like I mean, in I, the ra range of your role. 
Like yeah. for example, part of the role could be that you can hold tokens and then the tokens becomes extra rights and that becomes a range of variation within the same role yeah. itself. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I would think for, for that concrete example, I would think about them, for example, as access rights. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you a... spend this and, this and this amount of hours setting up a workshop, you get the equivalent factored by uh, as, a, as a amount of hours of access right to that space. Yeah, and it's 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 definitely one kind of like a like I said, there are many ways to approach how to express this, but it's uh, like access rights is is a good one. You can even think of a tra traditional transaction, let's say three euros for a, like a I don't know a teddy bear in in an online offer. In a way, like the three euros is an access right to yeah. get inside that offer and inside that offer, you get the rights of a teddy bear. But like, you're not asked who you are, et cetera. you just ask those three, three euro. And it's very much kind of thinkable in the range of access or in the language of access. And so, but, but, but once again, like thinking of it this way, we are thinking rights because what is access but a right to have, have yeah, access. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so, uh, like translating or kind of taking the perspective of rights always brings the brushes and the paints to the picture because you can start thinking, well, the right could be different and there could be this extra right or we could change this right. And, and then you're back to like, like how do we design this? Or you have like a rudimentary palette of starting to think about the designing of this. Um, and, and yeah, I, I think actually there is a, probably a case and maybe it makes sense to uh put like tokens as a fifth element for the the obox structure Be or dimension probably yeah or... yeah 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 it is uh because like ultimately like it utilizes similar aspects like or can you it, like not everything uses the same aspects and so on but like but for example writes or even moves thinking like yeah, I'm, I'm carrying this token i have this move because i have this token when I mm. use the move, there could be a logic in the token that I lose the token when I do the move. Or there could even be a logic that um, I can keep the token, therefore I can do the move always. Or there could be that every token that I have stands for one move, so I kind of spend the moves. And this is the kind of um, a range that the token offers. It's actually it's not a different language. It's, it's in the same language, but it's expanding how the instrumentality of this kind of language can function. Like sometimes it's very useful to have like, like a, say a move or a write in a token and then having the amount of tokens be the amount of the moves you have that can kind of uh, expand the range of kind of organizational systems you can create. Mm -hmm. and I would like, to, I would like to also maybe put a, this temporal line, the process line that you that you mentioned, or like you call it mm -hmm. process dimension, into this because I just thought, and this comes now again, like from what I've been like, I just thought about like in the like if you if you think of a kind of round like a turn based mm. progression mm. works. I mean that's how I know board games. But of course, yeah. in between the turns also happen a lot of, you know, I, you know, contacts between the players. Yeah. So that's always, but then, uh, so there's kind of moves being made yeah. somehow, you know, but like in um, what I thought of, if I kind of think about this context of what, maybe the residency or this other, this other mm -hmm. project, I find that like you could really take them more as like musical scores where mm -hmm. you have like five lines or like, eight per partner one because they all go on on their stuff they don't yeah. stop their enterprises just because i decided to have an organization so they yeah. continue doing that but at some point you have a kind of a chord and mm. stuff sounds together but you know uh, moves in different games are you know being played yeah you know at the same time and then somehow a different instrument comes back you know i'm not the same guy that i am now uh, which I was like four years ago mm. uh, when I began this whole enterprise uh, and like so many things have influenced me so but like how why not why not then think this kind of whole kind of symphony 
together as the kind of time structure that underlies such organization. Why do yeah. we need to kind of, it's not kind of, it's not a monolinear thing where like this, oh. the action space is occupied by one person at a time and all others have to wait for their turn. That's, I don't think that's how that works in real life. Yeah, like in the more like deeper, more advanced, like board gaming conceptualization or board games and around that, that there are other concepts. Um, yeah. Like, um, uh, and I'm, I'm not saying that only that palette has to be used, but it, but it's an actually an interesting palette and it would be good to at some point kind of give like a rundown of what, what's there. But just that, as I an- I would love that. I would yeah. love that, yes, very much. But just as an example, there's this whole paradigm of, interrupt moves and uh, also reaction moves which are kind of the same but slightly different but interrupt move is this category is like you have a right kind of again of whatever the flow is going when you do the interrupt it comes first it like everything moves to that in a certain context like in card games these are actually used but you're normally in a turn round order but an interrupt card can go in the middle of somebody's turn and just go there and then that card happens and then we return to the normal pattern of things. And of course that structure is, is much more applicable to flows, et cetera. And then the variation in interruptions or reaction is like, if a certain thing happens to you, you can counter it at any time, once again, against the flow. Um, as, and it's like, even if it's not recognized in a turn order or whatever, you can do that reaction and that then creates an interaction right there and there um, that happens and so on. There, there are these, these structures and like I said, it's, it's not everything, but like there is much more than just the uh, rounds and the turns in the, the more expanded design palette uh, that, uh, that has been uh, kind of conceptualized um, mm. and and there i it's an area i have some thoughts on i kind of actually some of the examples i posted in the telegram before this session sort of touch upon that i talk about floating mechanics and then there's a couple of examples of how moves are floating mechanics that they have this sort of uh many of them have this sort of condition that they recognize that they're suddenly active that anything mm. can be happening you're not even in rules. This is the, one of the interesting parts. You, you don't have any rules, but there's this floating move. And if this and this happens, the move can suddenly enter, insert something like a procedure or whatever the move entails. And then after kind of finishing itself, it just goes off again. And mm -hmm. things can uh, happen uh, even without other rules present again. And this is actually much more present and has a huge structural design range in particularly role-playing games because they want to have this anything can happen in the world and you cannot design rule sets that kind of completely contour such a thing so without really explicating it uh, because it's not really even called that but they have created all kinds of solutions to, to precisely things that might not be present but floating about but a certain situation happens and they recognize and they take a certain kind of change and then go off which is a really interesting design language because then it creates structures that are capable of dealing with real life situations situations that are not under other rules but have these kind of floating structures about and and have a lot of flexibility of encountering those kind of situations anyway mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. nerd nerd uh, uh no, but kind of worms interesting. will be uh, yeah, yeah. closed but but just to point out that there are, there are kind of actually interesting takes on structures that are not only in rounds and such things yeah i would love to have that as a kind of continuous uh, observation in this i think this this tem time uh, dimension is absolutely interesting yeah, i was yeah. just thinking also like um since uh, we spoke also about this conference mm -hmm. that, that happened in the fall um which pablo if, if i if we didn't introduce there will be it's a i, I think we mentioned it like this is yeah, yeah. In, yes. in residency uh, thing so you i mean also thinking or even the even the partners that that participate in one of the programs i was just thinking of this kind of multi-kernel like cpu you know like a multi-thread uh, thing so like mm. the the kind of computation so to speak of the organization would be going on 
uh, at the, like in synchronicity, synchronicity in, in many kernels at the same time of which the institution itself that we speak about is only one, but it's mm -hmm. being kind of operated even while it itself does not operate by the partners, it's been, there's a kind of kind of side like a tacit progression. Um, anyway, I think that could be so interesting also to draw, like really mm. draw, like with the yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that could be so so fascinating to have this kind of. Um, I need to jump off also, guys, yeah. because there's a like a, a walk outside to be had with a little family member. So um, yeah, like uh, I I think short kind of practical comments to, kind of towards the end but for for example that what you just described could be an interesting design session and we could even kind of have the start mm -hmm. of it there of course we can also branch out to have specific design sessions for um for particular cases but i think like even start of that could be brought as a, a session here and would be actually interesting because I, I do think it even helps that we have some structures almost like a toolkit but mm -hmm. then we also bring real cases and then we can take, mm -hmm. oh, this tool is useful here and so on. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think that can be fertile. And then um, what was this, uh, just shortly, because it's another can of worms, but I'll just peek in or open it slightly. I had a really interesting conversation years and years back with a designer called Jonathan Blow, who made a um, couple of, uh, quite, uh, some of them unknown, known games but doesn't really matter like uh but before he was sort of more famous he had this interesting experimental games and one of them was actually kind of playing at the same time branching timelines that it was, it was one battle but it was a, a, like you you could decide to move uh make the move a and the move c and that would start both A and C, and then you would have two games to play. You're playing in the time variant A and time variant C, and then you could, like, this could branch out and you're kind of making the game more complicated. You get the benefit of having multiple timelines, but now you have to think about three or five things at once. And I've been mm -hmm. thinking, like, I, I was kind of, it wasn't quite that, and I was also opening some of these possibilities, like um, riffing on like what the idea could be. Like you could even have organizations that decide to run two parallel channels because they cannot decide which structure is better, and making decisions of both, and then after two weeks actually crunching up and seeing nice. what happened. And there's yeah. all all these possibilities that open with these structures, um, yeah. which are really rarely seen. But anyway, I'll close the cam now because yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Super nice. Yeah. <sighs> Is the chat being saved? Uh yeah, I can now that you mentioned now we have a lot of stuff in chat. I'll post the chat in Telegram in addition yeah. to the video. I, I and, can save and, it. and and last request, Pico, if you could, is it possible that you could upload the video um maybe this yeah, week? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can try, but like the problem has been kind of shared account and like, but I can kind of hassle people that I can get it on the weekend. So like, uh, yeah. Uh, so I'll, uh, let, let's say I promise latest Sunday. Like, is that okay? Sounds great. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, uh, any last thoughts, Pablo, Martin? This was great. great. Session, yeah super fun super um uh, nice yeah i'm happy yeah no thank you very much this was uh, this was absolutely ex excellent yes <laughs> i love it yeah uh, yeah i think we found also a good approach not that everything has to be this kind of approach but i, I think it tells that putting a little bit more play in and playing about um is is useful and with that i will uh, stop the recording or oh, Zoom has changed interface of the